Hi everybody, do you want to know exactly how much I made as a teacher in Florida? This is as real as it gets. I'm going to show you my actual pay stub, at least the one that I was able to save, and briefly go over what all the numbers mean. I will show you my job offer, which indicated the annual salary and compare that to my last pay stub before leaving the US in 2022. If that's something you're interested in, please watch till the end. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of videos about teaching and living in the US on a visa. You can also find me on Facebook where I share lots of resources about teaching in the US and other countries too. So in case you're new here, I used to teach physics and math to 11th and 12th graders at a public school in Orlando, Florida on a J-1 visa. I started in 2017 and came back to my home country, the Philippines, in 2022 to fulfill my visa requirements. If you want to know how to apply for a J-1 visa, how to get hired as a teacher in the US, and which visa sponsors don't charge program and other fees, check out my other videos. I have the link below. For now, let's talk about how much I made as a high school teacher in Florida. Here's the deal with teacher salaries. They vary depending on a few factors like degrees earned. Teachers with relevant graduate degrees like a master's or doctorate will obviously get paid more than those with just a bachelor's degree. Second, years of experience. The more teaching experience a teacher has, the higher their salary will be. Third, state where the teacher works. I made a video comparing teacher salaries in different states, which you can can check out later. I also have the link below. Some states consider graduate degrees earned even if they're not directly related to the teacher's work and other states do not. For example, I have a master's degree in maritime education but I didn't get paid extra for it in Florida because it's not in physics which is my bachelor's degree. And some states only consider completed degrees not units earned. So even though I also took a master's in physics, I didn't get paid extra for it because I only earned 34 units. It was a bummer yeah but like i said some states are more generous than others fourth type of school in general public school teachers are paid more than private or charter school teachers this video will help you understand the difference between a charter and a public school anyway among public schools teachers at a title one school generally receive extra pay due to some challenges that exist well you'll understand what i'm saying when you get there and you're assigned to teach at a Title I school. Fifth, salary increases and bonuses depend on the state or district and whether there are extra fundings. And so I cannot tell you the rate of increase every year because it's really not fixed, right? There are teacher unions that negotiate with the Board of Education, so there's really no set salary increase for teachers, and like I said, it varies from state to state. Sixth, overload. Every school or school district has a maximum full load. Any extra teaching hours will be paid extra. For instance, at a school district where I work, there are seven periods each day and that's still the case till now. One period is for planning. This means that six periods is the full load. Some teachers accept an extra teaching load, so they do not have a planning period, meaning that they teach seven classes each day. They get extra pay for it. And finally, paid extra curricular duties. If you are a coach, for instance, if you do paid lunch or bus duties and tutoring among others, you will get extra pay. And one of the things that I really love there is that you will also get paid for attending seven seminars or trainings if they are done outside of school hours. All right, now here are some of the things that will not have any influence on your salary. I wanted to mention this because in the Philippines, these things can affect a teacher's salary depending on the school. But in the US, your salary is based on the things that I mentioned above, not on any of these other factors. Number one, awards and honors you receive. In the Philippines, it matters if you graduated cum laude, magna cum laude, or summa cum laude. If you were the top notcher in the licensure exam, etc. Next, professional affiliation. So teachers in the Philippines, uh, it will be better if they're a member of professional organizations, like for physics teachers, uh, there's Philippine Physics Society, seminars or trainings attended, publications. For instance, you're a book author or that you're a regular contributor to professional journals. That would count in the Philippines, but not in the U.S. Um, experiences not relevant to your work in the U.S. So, for instance, for a couple of years, you worked as a tutor 
not a uh, full-time teacher, that will not be counted. Anyway, these things might give you an edge though when you apply, but they won't add a dime to your salary. Foreign teachers are paid the same as locals with the same credentials, so that's very important for you to know. Watch this video to learn about tax exemptions for J-1 visa teachers. There have been pay increases since I left. There was actually a huge salary increase in Orlando, well actually in Florida, in 2021, but it only applied to new teachers. So yeah, you can imagine how the seasoned teachers felt when the extra 7,000 US dollars only went to the new hires. Okay, so here's my credentials just so you can place the whole thing in context. My bachelor's degree is BS Physics for Teachers. My graduate degree, I have Mastery in Maritime Education and Training, which I completed in 2017. I also took Master of Education major in Physics, 34 units earned. So none of these were counted. They did not add a dime to my salary because of the things that I mentioned earlier years of relevant teaching experience 16 years i'm also a book author so here's how my salary as a teacher in florida was determined again i had 16 years of teaching experience and that was it i didn't take any extra teaching load i wasn't a coach i didn't do any paid lunch or bus duties so my salary was as basic as it gets i had to cover some district related stuff in the pay stub and also my job offer but the rest is up for you to see you can pause the video and take screenshots if you want all right so let's get down to business the salary they offered me was just the base pay not including any other potential bonuses those things can vary from year to year so they do not appear in the job offer one year the bonus was two thousand five hundred dollars the next year it was a different amount altogether as you can see my starting salary was forty six thousand two hundred eighty five it is a job offer so it is up to the teacher whether to accept the job offer or not in my case i accepted it obviously now here's the pay stub that i received in may 2022 before for leaving the US. I'm showing it to you because I want to be transparent. Also, this was from the past. It has no meaning for me anymore currently, so I do not mind other people seeing this. Sure, pay stops can look different depending on the district or state. You can Google it if you want to see examples from other states. The pay stops from where I used to work showed my hourly rate, annual salary, sick leave, and personal leave balances, deductions, and any other extra income that I received. Okay, so as you have seen in the pay stops, they were from years before when I come back next year my salary would be different especially if I'll be teaching in a different state now you might ask so was this salary enough was I able to save okay in case you didn't know my husband was also working when we were there I will talk about J2 work related contents next time so make sure to watch out for that and like I said there were extra pays too so I received more than the annual salary shown in my pay stub such as my uh, retention bonus performance bonus extra funding that's received by my school we also get paid for them so I earned more than 49,250 US dollars in the school year 2021-2022 so I was not the only income earner in my family so yeah we were able to save for retirement and for other things we were able to afford going on trips when we were there we were able to afford flying in my in-laws twice etc so again in 2017 my annual income was 46,285. That's 2,622,114.68 in today's currency exchange. And in 2019, my annual income was 49,250 or 2,790,086.38 pesos. For five years, it was not much of an increase. As you know from the last video that I made, Florida is one of the states that do not pay teachers much. All right, so thank you for watching today's video. I hope hope it's helpful to you in making your decisions. I will see you in my next video. Bye.